Hey, Chase. We are live on Facebook. Yes, Justin. I'm going to mess with you a lot more than I normally do. Nah, I okay. I'm, I'm a little fired up for something. You, I, dude, I'm you that's why I said, dude, I'm going full tilt, full slay. <laughs> It's like you've been watching Cranes all morning. Oh, Ooh. yeah, Cranes are awesome. We're live on Instagram, and we are live on the Book of Face. Steve, Book of Face. what's going on, man? Not much, man. Today is Throw It Out There Thursday, so we're going to let you guys run the show today, ask any of your questions, but make them good and make them right. I don't know. Uh, and no questions at all about the Speed UTV. But we have to go over and talk to none other than just Justin. Just Justin there. Here. Thank you very much for that introduction, Steve. You're welcome. Amazing. Thank you. Steve is right. It is Throw It Out There Thursday, and we're going to go a little farther than we normally do on throwing things out there. We actually have zero subject at all today. You guys have all the subjects in your hands. If you sign on, whatever you're asking, we're going to answer. But Chase, before you go there, I have to give people the rules. It's right? too late because AZ no, Desert God. Rat, you're going to explain no. it to him right now. AZ Desert Rat, you're going to have to listen to me for a second, okay? You good? He's there. Okay. Here's the rules on signing in, you guys. Get to the point. We don't want to hear about your broken knee and how you haven't driven your car for so long, okay? If you do something like that, if you start stretching this out, Steve's going to come in here, he's going to give you the karate chop, and you're going to be kicked right off the feed because we're going to get to somebody that gets right to it. AZ, Desert Rat, what subject can we talk with you about today? Let's talk about mustaches, for one. <laughs> Holy mackerel. <laughs> Mustache man? Sweet. <laughs> no, uh, all right, let's get to the point. I just need you to sell me on smart shocks, man. Sell you on smart shocks? Like you're considering an X3 and you don't know which way to go, smart or not smart? Well, um... Previously, you said they were rough, and then a couple weeks ago, you said spend the money, so... Um, so here's why I am contradicting myself with those two statements. It is true, in our opinion, that the SmartShock setup is aggressive on how it ramps up the compression rate when you're going through stuff. So it's really, really plush if the bumps are six inches or smaller, but as they start to get up to like the size of normal whoops of a foot tall or bigger, it gets abruptly um, rough and stiff. That has to do with the algorithms and the computer and how it controls the system. Um, I think that smart shocks are a great option. It's something that people should have. It's definitely the wave of the future that we're all gonna be part of in just a few years. Yep. And I think you should get it. The reason I say that is because we can actually make it more plush in the areas that it's not. So we can take the negatives out of a system and you end up with a very, very smart system in a car a UTV or whatever you want to call it that's worth having in my opinion for three or four thousand bucks that's why I recommend it you do have to spend a little bit more afterwards and let us play with it uh, to, to make it perfect but it's really really good okay and where are you guys at with those shocks right now do you guys have a pretty solid setup perfect we've done nothing but testing we actually have a shop car here uh, that is smart shocks car we test nearly every single day and um, all the people that we've done that system for so far all love it so very proud of it. It's definitely something you can get right away. Right on. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks Appreciate for getting it. right to it. T-shirt size and color in the DMs, and let's see if Chase does his job. Cool. Right, right on. Thanks. Doubt it. <laughs> Doubt it. What do you got, Matt? Anthony Guerrero wants to know best tacos in San Felipe. Uh, Poblanos, and that was a mistake because I shouldn't have said anything. Now you're all going to go there and it's going to get screwed up. Mike Doves, one for Steve. Does pineapple belong on pizza, Steve? Absolutely. Yes, yes I would also I second agree. that. I like a Hawaiian 100%. pizza. Matt. Uh, Michael Bowman wants to know IQS steering wheel controls. Um, so here's the thing. Everybody asks us about that. We keep telling you it's another month, another month, another month. It is something that's... Boring. Steve, yeah. <laughs> Steve, Steve wants us to move on. Um, we've been developing that for so long. It's very frustrating for us, too, because we also have to do things by the rules. Um, and when I say by the rules, there's other influences involved, like Bosch, computer programming, Fox, and some of the OEMs. So we've been pushed off a little bit, but it's still happening. Justin, soft or hard tacos? Uh, soft tacos, absolutely. The only way to go in Mexico. Is we, that J-Hup? We Flower, got J-Hup on the line. Oh, God, hang up. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, man? All right, question is, so I've got, uh, I did the spring shocks and had them rebelled about 1,500 miles ago. Uh, what am I going to feel when I'm going to need to get the uh, nitrogen recharged in them? 
Uh, two things are gonna happen if the nitrogen gets too low. One, it'll start to bottom out in places where it used to not bottom out, or at least it, it starts to run softer in big hits. The other one, when nitrogen gets low, typically you start to leak, leak a little bit of oil because the shaft seals seal the shaft due to pressure behind them. So as the pressure drops, they tend to leak more. So if you notice a difference in how it rides, bottoming out, or it has a little bit of a leak, typically that's nitrogen or a failing seal. Um, so charge it up and see how it goes. Desert car, should I get them shocks rebuilt again at 2,000 miles? Um, we, are, we, say, we tell people 2,500, 3,500, so you're not quite there yet. If they're not leaking, I wouldn't rebuild them. Just charge them up and see how the ride is. Ride still plush. Yeah, then charge them up and run another year. All right, cool, man. Thank Thanks, you. man. Have a good one. Later, Jay. Steve, almost cut you <laughs> out. I almost cut you out of here. <laughs> Send us your shirt size and DMs. <laughs> Justin, good, are there yeah. any updates on the XP Pro videos? Josh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Josh, Josh, any updates on XP Pro videos? They should be going live. Uh, this week? Well, today, you know, tomorrow. Yeah. So Josh, so you're really good behind the camera and you suck in front of the camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, best cameraman on set right now, Chase. Just saying. We have. Justin, do we offer Schrader valves? Yes, of course. I don't know what they cost though. What's a Schrader valve? So cost? if you just bring me your car for Schrader valves, it's uh, $10 a Schrader, so $40 for a whole car, and then there's a little bit of labor on top of it. Okay, very good. Who do you got? We got Austin. Austin, what's going on? Looks like you're in the garage. What are we looking at? What's your question? And uh, yeah, what can we what can we handle for you? Wow. I, I, can you I hear us? Problems where I bend shock clevises. Shock clevis. Okay, so that's a, that's a lower loop on a walker. It's very common to bend them once you bend a radius rod. I'm guessing maybe you bent a radius rod to cause that. Or that be, or bent an upper arm maybe to cause that. It's a rear. Okay. So, I um, think this is the third one I've done three. There it is. So we've got those lower loops in stock. We've got those lower loops in stock, man. So just give us a call and we'll mail one out if you're local, come by and grab one. We, we literally have hundreds and hundreds of those in stock. It's very common. Awesome. Thanks, man. Have a good one. How far out are you guys? What's that? How far out are we? Uh, I'm not really sure. Jeez. It's probably about six or seven weeks, but call the guys up front. They're only going to give you an exact date on all of our scheduling, okay? Justin, how do they reach those people? What's the number? Oh, 623 623-217-4959. Almost gave out my uh, number. I was hoping he was going to slip up. Very, very close. <laughs> I was hoping he was going to slip up. <laughs> all right. Bye. Next, Matt. Uh, Sean Roush wants to know, do we have any job openings? We always have job openings. Especially for camera people. I will tell you right now, <laughs> if you can hold a camera still, not touch, not, <laughs> actually, actually do your job like a normal cameraman should, you're hired and Chase is fired. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And I'm yeah. gonna do that today. But uh, if, you're bye. Not, if you're not a cameraman, then Chase, stop it. I'm not ready yet, I'm still talking, okay? If you're not a cameraman, we got a ton of positions. We have shipping, we have kidding, we have up in the front with sales, we have uh, guys in the shock area, and also installations. Is that Cody? Go to, is it jobs at shock therapist? I believe so. Yeah, jobs at shocktherapist.com, <laughs> and we will take care of it. Who you got, Chase? Rich Fortin wants to know if they have to wear deodorant, but with that being said, <laughs> we got Cody on the line, Lake Life Shibby. What's Cody going Sanders. on, Cody? You sexy stud. What's up, Cody? Hey, get to it or we're going to cut you off. Okay, uh, I just wanted to jump on here and say you guys do an amazing job, and I love the YXE, and Chase will get me my back on that one. Uh, <laughs> we forgot, hang up. We forgot to mention <laughs> really he's fun. crazy. Boo. You guys do, I appreciate it. Hey, thanks a lot for uh, signing on and saying that, but uh, you got to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you got, Steve? Uh, Rich Fortin uh, had said, do we have to wear deodorant? And Mike Dubb said, deodorant is optional. So Chase? Clearly. Clearly, clearly it's Chase optional. has made that rule the case. <laughs> Since we don't have anybody to sign on right this second, the reason that we have this general as a background right now is because this general, XP1000, is a brand new kit for us. We have brand new spring kits for it. We have shock internals and everything else to make it right amazing. And by the way, this thing will run through one foot whoops full lord. It is amazing. Steve. Justin, does your spring kit for a 2019 X3 bring the ride height to the current X3 model's ride height? Uh, probably a little bit more than that. Our, our ride heights for a 30 inch factory tire are 16 inches, 16 and a half inches. I think that's about an inch ha taller than factory 2021. Matt. Uh, Matt asks, uh, how come it, it says that powder coating voids are warranty, uh, but our shop cars have powder coating? 
Okay, we're gonna get back to you, Matt. So remember that question. Yep. We got somebody live. We got Juan <laughs> on the line. Juan, where are you at? What are you driving? And what's your subject for the day? What's what's your question? Hey guys, I'm in Goodyear and I have a Pro SD4 Walker Evans. Mm -hmm. um, I actually have an appointment for you guys um, to revamp and give me springs here in May. Badass. I'm worried about the increased ride height uh, causing me to roll over and be a little tippy more. I rolled at the dunes over Thanksgiving and might have given me a little PTSD. Um, so what can I do to prevent that extra body roll and maybe stay on all fours? So on that specific kit with a spring kit and internals, we also try to pair that kit with the rear anti-sway bar that we make. What that does, anti-sway bars do not affect the ride when you hit things straight on like whoops and big jumps, but what they do is stop all body roll. So it's very common in an XP to roll the car. I could name off 100 customers that did it in the first 10 miles. So uh, anti-sway bar stops the body roll, instant fix. I would do all three together if you can, and that's uh, one of our most popular stage three kits. Is this gonna apply for the Pro too? It's not just the regular XP, it's the Pro. <clears throat> um, so on a Pro, not so much because the Pro has a factory front bar and a factory rear bar. Um, our spring kit is actually going to firm up the body roll on a Pro, but soften up the ride quality on a Pro. I know it's hard to uh, understand that we could do both, but it, it is possible on that one. So it's gonna have less tendency to roll with our spring kit than what you currently have right now. Also, we have some adjustable kits to allow you to stiffen up the factory sway bars that are available in about 30 days. So we could uh, show you that as well. Awesome, I'll see you guys in a couple of months. And thanks man, thanks for bringing your car in and thanks for signing on. T-shirt size and color in the DMs. Matt, back to your awesome. spring question. Mm -hmm. It was, why do we powder coat when we don't allow anyone else Correct. to do it? Here's why. <clears throat> When people powder coat their springs, we cannot control the powder coater that they use. And a lot of times, most of the time, the powder coater overheats the springs when they strip the original powder coat and then bake it on afterwards. When they do that, they ruin the spring and we cannot warranty that. Also, when you change the color, it doesn't have our name on it anymore. It does not have our part number on it anymore. We have no idea even if that's our spring. So how do we stand behind it? That's the reason why we don't tell you to do it and we actually tell you not to do it. The reason we do it is because our powder coater does it the correct temperature and stripping process without ruining the spring and we know we don't have to warranty our own personal springs. There you go. Boom. Done. Mic drop. Justin, do we plan on making suspension parts? Never. We are never, never going to make suspension long travel kits and never, arms never, and things never. like that. There's plenty of guys that do it and they do a great job and they are our customers and friends and we are not going to step on their toes. Okay, Chase. We got Dave Levinson on the line. Dave, can you hear us? And his signal dropped. Bye, Dave. Don't wa Nobody waste our time. Bye. Bye. Yeah, we got quite the lineup here. So Josh, Josh keeps <laughs> raising his hand to mess with the camera, and I think he's chased with somebody live. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, Chase, Josh, Chase about to get slapped. Got? Okay, Matt, what do you got? Uh, Nate Pearson says, did I understand it right that you can run multiple shocks, bump stop, uh, in unlimited UTV class for best in the desert. I saw Yamaha patent pictures which have bypass shocks. Um, so according to the current rules right now, you cannot. No, 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 in unlimited you can. So in unlimited, yeah, you can run all the shocks you want, bypasses included and bump stops and everything else. And there has been a Yamaha based class 10 kind of build car that's been out there doing that. Um, there are rumors that, that some of those shock uh, rules might tighten up a little bit next year. We yes. got Mr. Thanks. Does It All on the line. What's going on, brother? Where are you at? What are you driving? And what's your, your subject for the smile. day? What's your question? <laughs> so I'm in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Um, right now I'm still on my uh, Polaris Outlaw, but I'm in the market for my first side-by-side. -side. For the kind of riding my wife and I like to do, uh, we're looking probably in that 60-inch range, 60-inch uh, category. Wondering if you guys have a recommendation on what you would drive if you guys were doing it. It's not really your, your thing. In a, in a, in a 60-inch car, um, I'm going to go with a Polaris... Uh, so brother's keeper. The 900 or 1000. Um, hey, Steve. Yes, sir. What's the actual designation on a, on the S? S, a 900S or 1000S? Yes, one, yep. Polaris 900S, Polaris 1000S. If you don't need a utility, if you wanted a utility like with a bed, then it's going to be a general, period. That's my favorite one in that area. 
but in a narrow car it's going to be an S. Also, that new <laughs> RC. What is it? Also, the other designation on RC. There's a couple other letters. RC R R. No, 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 no. On the the narrow one we just did with Canyon. Oh, that's the commander, right? The the little squirt. Yeah, the squirt. Yep. Okay, so sport XRC. I do yep. like me a sport. I think it's a tighter, better feeling car, like fit and finish, but it doesn't have the power of a, a 1000 S, not even close. And I kind of love horsepower, honestly. Yeah. So I would probably get in a 1000 S personally. I uh, keep touching that mic, personally. Um, but before I went to the sport, but I do like a sport. They ride good too. Cool. Sorry if I confused you. Think t-shirt size no. and color in the DM, and Chase will send it to you. We'll, we hope. You guys got a couple. It. Thanks, man. Thank you. I'm trying to watch my breathing. <laughs> <laughs> <That's what you laughs> uh, Justin, are we ever going to have a Turbo S sway bar system? I know this question has been asked a bunch of times, and I need you to answer it again. Okay, so we have a Turbo S rear bar for a two-seater only, not a four-seater. Is that right? I think I got that correctly. So you said that correctly, but we are not doing sway bars We're not selling at them. all, two-seater or four-seater. Okay, so here's the deal. We're not going to make them um, bar only, but we do have a new product that is going to be coming out soon that will allow you to make the system adjustable and run a stiffer bar, a lighter bar settings Ooh. on your Turbo S. It's about 45 days away. So no bars, something else coming soon. Chase. That was just you had something very eloquent to say. Yeah, what? I'm sure you had yeah, something great. Just, nothing. Mm. Jackson 5. What's a up, Jimmy? ABC. It's as easy as one, uh, two, three. I'm guessing that Chase was about to hijack the direction we were going completely. Probably. And have something to say that meant nothing. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, what are you breathing what? is good? <laughs> say it. He said breathing is good, but um, it's on. when you. <laughs> We got That's West Coast Rig good. in the building. What's going on, brother? Where are you at? What are you driving? And what's your subject for today? Come on. Uh, what's up, man? Uh, I'm from Valley, California. I'm driving a 2019 Can-Am uh, XRS Max. I actually have my suspension done by you guys also. Um, my question is, I'm in the market for some new paddles. I kind of run a 14-inch wide sand stripper right now. But uh, I'm actually kind of thinking of going kind of more narrow and a taller tire. I, am, I do have some upgrades to the motor, so I was just kind of wondering what the benefit of running a taller tire versus a wider sand tire. So um, taller, taller, narrower tires tend to have more traction in a straight line, like drag racing. Um, yeah. Wider, flatter tires tend to have more drivability, slideability in the dunes. Um, if you tune them correctly, they're not going to have less traction than the taller, narrower one does. I personally am not a big fan of tall narrow paddle tires there's a lot of sidewall movement in that system it makes it kind of washy when you're duning also it does one thing really good and that's go straight it does not turn very well um if you if you kind of want the best of all worlds i personally would be doing like a 33 sand tires unlimited if you've got stock horsepower in that car a number one paddle is perfect if you've got a big flash in the car a number two paddle is perfect um, run it on a fairly wide wheel so you've got more of a square pattern. You'll get the traction you're looking for going forward in a drag race, and you can still slide it around in the dunes without rolling the sidewall over and, and rolling the car. Um, that's my personal preference, but that, the difference, to back to your question, tall and skinny goes straight really well and nothing else. Uh, short and flat, if you do it right with the right paddle, will have the traction and will slide and dune really well. Gotcha. One last question. Will you guys be on Glamis this weekend? No, we're not in Glamis anymore this season. We're not going back until uh, Camp Razor next year. All right, thanks. T-shirt size and color. Take it easy, man. Matt. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> question, question about uh, do we have anything coming out for the Yamaha R-Max? Well, what's an R-Max? The, 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 it's yes, that Wolverine, yes, so right? It's that Wolverine, Wolverine that Mitch was working on. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, I don't think, we're, what, a couple months out, okay, I'd say? Okay, so maybe actually a month. we're done, but we're actually going to have to make parts we're for that. I say it's the parts we're waiting okay, on. Okay, so we have the R-Max. Sorry, I get confused between numbers of, uh, of all these things. Now there's so many of them and letters. Um, on that utility Yamaha, which is very similar to a, a modern Rhino. I don't mean that in a bad way, but kind of like A-arm and, and engine style and stuff. 
Um, we've already done the shock work, we've already done spring kits, we have everything done, but the shock package is completely new on that in diameters and dimensions, and so we have to make some new parts for it. Uh, I would say a month we're done with parts, and in a month and a half we'll have all that stuff available. We'll announce it, so don't worry. More? I just have a question. Is an electronic sway bar smart, Justin? Um, I think electronic sway bars are cool. Whether they're smart or not is definitely debatable. 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 Did you just question another Yamaha, Justin? I did. Okay. Yeah. Actually, got, I like that you one. You got it, Cody. That one was pretty good. <laughs> that was from Cody. <laughs> we got Mr. Oh, Strickland yeah. on the line. What's going on, Grease Monkey? What's your question? And what is? Uh, what can we do for What's your subject for the day? Look at those sunglasses. About, uh, uh, nice. The dynamic shocks on an XP Turbo, not the S, versus RC2s. What would be the difference... Uh, internally between those two sorry i didn't hear you i got yeah. lost in your sunglasses <laughs> sorry man i, I didn't there you go show those pretty eyes i didn't hear you either describe <laughs> the two car differences and shock differences again uh, well because i picked up a set of uh dynamic shocks from a 2018 xp turbo to go on my xp turbo that has walkers mm -hmm. and you guys have must have them in storage now or something they're there for my appointment in april and they're getting uh, revalved uh, spring and IQS. So I'm just wondering what the difference is in those internally uh, compared to an RC2. Um, so very little difference actually. Steve, are you just laughing? You love his accent. I uh, do. Your accent. Uh, uh, say RC2 one more time, just for me, please. <laughs> RC2. Oh, RC2. <laughs> like a pirate. There you go. That's cool, man. I like it, man. <laughs> love it. Hey, Steve. Yes. Uh, sorry. Just uh, to answer his question, actually, internally, RC2s versus. Fox internal a uh, smart shocks or dynamic shock. I think the difference is that one has a cup in the front and one doesn't. That is 100% right? correct. And so that just, I wanted to make sure before I told you. RC2s have a bottom out cup for bottom out resistance, both front shock and rear shock. <laughs> the dynamic system uh, Foxes have a bottom out cup in the rear only. Um, okay. That's not a huge difference because with live system, like uh, IQS or with uh, dynamics, it's going to ramp compression up when you need it anyway, so the bottom out cup isn't that important. But that's pretty much okay. the only difference between the two sets. They've got uh, everything else is the same. Okay, I've got uh, limit straps coming with those too, so. Definitely want to do that. That'll save the shock life forever. All right, man. Okay. Thanks a lot for your question. Appreciate it. Thank you. Matt. Sway bar links for the KRX. Uh, sway bar links for the here. KRX are actually designed, tested, and done. And Josh, did you do the video on those links already, or that is that coming? Next Karen. Monday. What's that? Next Monday. Next Monday. You heard it straight from the smartest video guy on the set. Oh, Whoa. dang! <laughs> <laughs> so those are going to be available in a week, uh, maybe a week and a half, you guys. Reno 6.7. Steve puts the Seuss in suspension. That is like true. That. But the he also, is, he all, it's suspect, uh, and he's talking, uh, to, talking some smack. But that's cool. He said, when a dude with a nose ring says you have pretty eyes, well, maybe you have ugly eyes. I'd tell you you have pretty ones if you showed me. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, did you have something? Uh, yes. Uh, Todd Samber wants to know, do you still do field testing? If so, how does he sign up? Um, the only thing that we actually test uh, on a daily basis are brand new vehicles and brand new setups. We do do some race tunes as well, but we're very particular about our race tunes and we only have a few people that we support. Chase. We got Evolution side by side in the building. What's going on, brother? What's, What's your up? subject for today? What's your question? Hey, so 2019 Dynamics Turbo S. Started racing the car in DP4. I've had two failures now, electronic gremlin. Um, if I'm going to switch to a different shock to race that car with, what would you recommend I run in that, just if I'm going to pull the dynamics off and throw something else on? Then um, I, would run a Fox the off I would run a Fox again and I would switch it to an internal bypass. That's the only thing that I would recommend above what you currently have. Um, it's built the best, best internals, not going to fall apart, going to work perfect for racing. And um, we have a lot of experience with that package too. Now, what, what do you recommend of if I were to take the dynamic shocks that are on it now, the Fox, and have the electronics pulled off and have you guys go through and just basically make them an internal bypass? So we can pull that stuff off right the second and put a, a dual, am I correct? A wow. DSC fits right in that live valve adjuster, right? Uh, correct, yep. Yeah. So if you just send us the shocks, we can pull that live valve out of it and put a DSC adjuster, which is a dual compression adjuster, high and low speed, and all of a sudden it's not an electric shock anymore. That shock package will still work perfect for you racing. Awesome. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. You got it, man. Thanks for being quick. Steve. Send us your shirt size. 
Oh, so guess. Frank G Life actually has a really good question. Mm, okay. um, he said on uh, maybe t not today, but maybe one of our live feeds, we can show how we trim the plastic for when someone flips their resis to toe mirrors. Ah, uh, <laughs> no mirrors. No or? mirrors or toe mirrors, brother. That's right. So. A resi on the outside. We'll show you. That's actually going to take us about 10 seconds. Yeah. We might have to have more subject in that one. Oh, we Jace, got you don't even have one? anybody signing on. I do. Why is your hand out here? There's no one on the screen. Justin, our oh, RC2. I, <laughs> I got one of our Fee Locals triple digit sketch in the oh, building. Oh, dang. What's triple going digit. on, man? What do you got, man? Get to it. What's going on? Uh, just a quick question. What's going on with the, uh, the XP Pro R? Ooh, okay. Um, so part of me wants to tell you everything I know. The other part of me doesn't want to go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Justin. That's, that's all. That's all. That, I mean, you, you guys have seen the pictures. You know, it's a it's a big cubic inch deal. Uh, normally aspirated, a whole bunch of different drive uh, style, different suspension. Uh, bigger, heavier car, almost like a class ten. Kind of amazing. Um, that's all I can tell you. After that, I can't tell you when they're going to release it because I, uh, I'd have to kill you. And also, I'm not gonna tell you any, any more about it because everything I just said you can see from the picture. I think that also pertains to what everyone's been asking about, Justin. Robbie Gordon Speed UTV. Everything he just said applies to that too. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Triple blowers and all kinds of things. Yes. Uh, well, he's got one more question. What do you got? The shock to the lower arm then. If Robbie Gordon just patented that. Yeah, I think he's going to have a long road to hoe. Um, fighting Polaris on that. I am aware that he he has had that patent for, for some time. It's been quite a few years. I don't know, man. We're going to see. They're going to find it out. Uh, we'll find out who has more money on that one. <laughs> All right. Basically what it comes down to when you talk about lawyers. Who's got more money? <laughs> gotcha. Have a good one. Thanks, Later. man. Send us your Justin, size. Mr. Sparkles wants to know, Sparkles. Coke or Pepsi? Uh, I'm, I'm Coke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, whatever. I don't care. Just yeah, well, pretty I'll drink whatever. Yeah, I mean, you've seen me do it. Yeah. So Rich, I was hoping he was gonna say Chickalo, but Rich you know, Fortin. At least Justin confirms it's going to be a game changer. Ooh, he said uh, too yeah, much. Yeah, it is. Okay, it is. It is a completely different direction that I think everyone's gonna love. Will yes, we Matt. be getting one? Always, no matter what, we'll have it. <laughs> uh, Carter Matt, wants to know. Way too slow. Yeah, signed it's off. boring. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Date on when the Talon X non-live valve limit straps might be coming out. Justin, I will answer for him. Six to eight months. Yeah. Because he's going to say two to three weeks. And that's just not the case. Justin. So here's here's the the truth is that there's a lot of clearance problems on the front shocks to allow for that clamp. We have to redesign it with some stainless steel high clearance stuff. It's going to be a while. We got Chris Shut on the timer off, man. Shut Shut timer. timer off. Chris, where are you at? What's your question for the day? What can we do for your subject? It looks like he's at work, you guys. He's got a crane, just like it looks like our Ooh, office this morning. Dang. Right on. Chris, what's up? Hey, man, I got a uh, 2020 Razor XP, you know, NA naturally. I had paddles on it a couple weeks ago when we went to uh, Glamis. They're 29, 14 by 14 rears, 29, 11, 14 front. When we were riding on Sand Highway to Mexico, it felt really floaty, like the rear end, if that makes sense. Like it wanted to just float all over the place. Is that normal? Uh, yes, it is. So let me describe that to you. Going down Sand Highway and that thing's following every single track in the trail. Like okay. uncontrollable in the back, right? Yep. Normal. You can run less tire pressure. It might settle down. You could uh, run a 15-inch wheel and it might settle down. But it's always okay. going to be there. Cool. Okay. Do you think I'd be better off going with like a 28 uh, 10 paddle or a 12 paddle? Or uh, yeah, 20, a tw and, and like shorter is not good. Um, you're going to want to go taller if anything. Like a 15 inch wheel and a 30, 32 inch paddle, that would be a better package for your actual, your power level of an XP with like a number one paddle. That would be perfect. Also, um, that extra size, believe it or not, can be helpful um, when it comes on that tracking on Sand Highway. But it's always going to track a little bit. Don't worry about it. And it just need, I just need to fine tune the clutching because I did blow two belts that weekend too. That sucks. That's pretty normal too. Okay, getting a little bit long. Okay. Bye. Later, Chris. Have a good one. I like your hat. Send us your shirt size. Direct messages. <laughs> Falling asleep over here, Justin. Speed this up, Chase. Are you going to be doing a computer tune or a revalve for the Smart Shocks? Yes. There you and go. That was yes. a great answer. That was very quick. <laughs> Short and to the point. That's I right, like Matt. it. What do you got? What oil is run in the race car? Boo. Not, uh, what oil is run? Like in the shocks? No, no, in the race car, like oil. Oh, uh, we run all Z Max and everything that we race. Badass product, products, uh, amazing stuff. Uh, look them up. Yep. Yeah. Justin, 
whiskey or tequila? Uh, you know, I've been known to drink both, but since you ask, I'm gonna go scotch. Damn! And you know what else I'm gonna do? I'm gonna say Dalmore Alexander the Third scotch. If I wow. am being honest. All right, we got a live one. El Gordito in the building. He just went in the garage. What's your question for the day? What do you want our subject to be? Hey, bro, I'm I, I'm going through the dunes and then I bottom out a lot. Going through the dunes and he bottoms out a lot. On stock tires, I see, right? No, 32-inch tires, stock rim. Okay, are you running that dirt tire or are you running a paddle? Uh, is that tire you're showing me, is that what you're running in the dunes? Dirt tire. Dirt tire. How much air are you running? Yeah. How much air? How much air pressure? Uh, I'm running about 10. 10 PSI? Yeah, yeah. 10, 10 PSI. Okay, 10 PSI in a stock tire, and you got a spare tire on the top, you probably didn't take the tire off, right? Yeah. Have you done any shock work and spring work yet? Uh, just, just the shock therapy, that's about it. Just, just the spring springs? kit? Yeah. Okay, so there's a couple things you can do. Number one, you gotta run the tire pressure up, which kind of sucks because you have a stock tire. When you do that, then the traction goes down, but you really have to run 12 to 14 PSI. That's gonna help you stop bottoming out. That's number one. Yeah. Number two, take that spare tire off. No one runs a spare tire in the dunes. Lighten the car up just a little bit. Number three, you can run the adjusters a little stiffer, especially in the back when you go to the dunes. But I think you're gonna find out if you run a set of paddle tires that are 30 to 32 inches tall and you run 12 to 14 PSI, your bottoming out's gone. Cool? All right. Cool, Justin. Cool. Perfect, bro. Thank you also awesome, have, a, have a great day. Send us your shirt size. You also can't have a name like El Gordito and not bottom out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you, well, you got a point. You can't have that. But also, um, you guys, if you watched the last video, we do explain a lot about tire pressure and bottoming out. Not to be mean, but also Rich Fortin Justin says Delmar Delmore is rich people that want to die broke scotch. Oh really? Well I would I would I would <laughs> I don't so, know how to say that. So I have I have something to say about that. First off, I would love to be a rich person and die broke. <laughs> then I have accomplished my life goal. <laughs> we got Jared on the line. Jared, looks like you're driving. Be careful, man. What's your subject today? What can we do for you? Yes, sir. And uh, just to kind of add to that last point, no one wants to be the richest asshole in the graveyard. So That's right. Because <laughs> once you're dead, all that money is worthless. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't have that many friends I like to give it to. So. <laughs> and uh, so... I actually, uh, I work for a power sports dealership myself. I sell Polaris in Can-Am, and I am a big Can-Am fan. I've got a 2020 XRS Turbo RR. I love the thing to death, and I've got a lot of parts on there already for you guys, and definitely more to come for sure. Thank you. But one, one thing that has really stumped me, and I know manufacturers are always going to hype up their products, but what is the true knitting gritty pros and cons to the Dynamics versus Smart Shock. I know Can Am has really pride themselves on adjusting rebound, but in all actuality, which one is a really faster, more uh, responsive system that is beneficial? Can Am is faster and more responsive than the Dynamics. I'm probably going to get the Polaris engineers calling me pissed off today <laughs> by saying that, but I do believe that Can Am's um, refresh rates are in the 150 to 200 times a second. Um, I could be wrong, but I know that the Polaris's are like 30 times a second. So as far as speed is concerned, I, I think that the Can-Am is quicker. Um, both the Dynamics and the Can-Am system or Smart Shock system do affect rebound, but I believe that the Can-Am Smart Shock system has the ability to affect rebound in a much bigger way. Um, so of the two, I think that right now uh, the Can-Am system is a bit better, but I don't think that it rides better. If that's uh, tough for me to describe, but a dynamic system, in my opinion, rides better than a smart shock system just a little bit. I think the smart shocks get aggressive very fast and it can be a rough ride. But that's a very small thing to worry about because you can always play with them like we do and then they ride amazing. Absolutely, yeah. I've got a buddy with one and he says it's just really rough at, at low speeds and we're definitely working on getting it uh, getting burning right. He just put your springs on and he'll be sending Bye -bye. shots <laughs> next week to you guys. So hopefully I can be following uh, him up here pretty soon. Hey man, with, uh, thanks. 
Thank you very much for grabbing our stuff. Give us a t-shirt size, everything in a, in a color, the DM. And Steve says bye. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, bye. <laughs> Later. What do you got there, Steve? You got something uh, important? Uh, so I want to address an issue on myself that everyone's been asking. They want to know if my zipper is broken. And Justin, I'm going to prove to everybody right now that my zipper is not broken. It does work. It is fully functional. The reason I tie it up at the top is because I do what the F I want. Okay? <laughs> Matt, what do we, you got? we did get a question asking about the socks. The socks. So, oh yeah, Steve. Oh. You can't. You can't. <laughs> Hold on. Let me. Let me. Out. Let me say two weeks, and then it's, it's <laughs> Justin six. <months. laughs> That's all you, bro. It's uh. I'm. I'm. See. <laughs> See. You want, oh. people, you want to tell people how quick you think it's gonna be, but the it's out of my. It's, it's out of my. Completely hand. out of your hands, yeah. and you can't do anything about it. It is very, very, very Fine. close. But it happens. It's very close. You, you still haven't said anything. Yes. What's it gonna be? Well, uh, how long before the socks? People want to know. How long? By the end of this year. <laughs> oh, okay. No. A couple months. Holy okay. cow. We got Cody on the feed. He's got some glasses you're going to like, Steve. What's your subject for today, Cody? Whoa! He's probably in the game. I think he's in Glamis. Yeah, you got bad service, buddy. Bye. Got to go. All right, Cody, check your service. Come back later. It looked like he was in Glamis. He did. He did. Well, that'd be a nice place to be right now. That's for sure. Matt, you breathing hard? Nope. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Just one. <wondering>. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> How about Steve? You got anything? Uh... Okay, you guys I got out. I got Hello oh. Carlos. Okay, you guys got three more minutes to <laughs> sign on. Say on hello, Kitty. Right <laughs> <laughs> hello, what? Carlos. Where are you at? What's your subject for today? What can we help you with? I'm in uh, out in LA at, at work, uh, but I got a quick question that I got to ask you guys about the clutch. Um, I got a Can Am X3, and brother, I think That's you put your hand over your phone. <laughs> Take your oh, okay. there. You go. <laughs> yeah, the mask start is start over. <laughs> So I got some I got some tensors that I just bought, 33 inch, um, and I was wondering if I go back to my paddles, which are 32 inch. Just curious on if I have to do any clutching work on that. I think between or the two I, of I those, clutch it for the 33s. Yeah, I mean just an inch an inch tall tire difference. I don't think you're gonna have to mess with the clutching at all. When you start doing two or three inch tire changes, then that would be worth doing. Um, if you're only gonna go in the dunes only and run sand tires only, then you might run a specific clutching tune just for paddles. Um, but that difference between what you're talking about is not enough to worry about. Don't even do it. All right, perfect. Thank cool. you, guys. Thanks, man. T-shirt size and right. color. Send it in the DMs. Matt. Awesome. Rodney wants to know if he can buy the spring kit off that general. Rodney wants that spring kit? Yep. I'm sorry, but this customer owns it. And uh, actually, can we make another one? I think that we can. In theory, uh, we got like some springs right around here. So Rodney, call Matt, and uh, he'll work it out. What do you got, Chase? I got Robert on the line. Robert, what's going on, man? What's your subject today? Where are you at? What do you drive? Uh, in Princeton, West Virginia, I have a uh, Can-Am 2018 X3 Max, um, the, the base model turbo, uh, turbo R. Recently bought your um, uh, sway bar links for the front, and the um, the uh, the spacers are a little bit different than what's on your videos. And I, I think uh, from earlier questions, it may be a video posting problem. But I was wondering if you want to update your your uh, videos to, to match the new spacers that you have on your uh, camera. Your link. So on that that spacer kit that you've got right there, I think that must have been an older uh, older link kit that was sitting in the bottom of the bin. Uh, to have it not match the new video. We can next day you a set right away or uh, whatever is best for you. But do me a favor, I want you to call the front office, talk to JT, and I'll have JT get you anything you need on next day. Okay, sounds good, thank you. Hey, thanks man, have a good one. Mike Doves would like to say, make sure you send us your shirt size. That was so your dad, he'd like to say on there. He said he looked like you, Mike Doves. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I just say something? Mm. Everyone that's sending in your shirt sizes, we <laughs> also need your address. Address, name, please. Matt, settle down. They're our customers. Be nice to them. <laughs> <laughs> He's so easy to get riled up. Who knew it was an address thing? I had no idea to push the right buttons. Chase, do you have somebody else? Or are you I have it? our last... Our so last viewer coming so in, but he, know, has not, Chase, he has not tagged in yet. Chase does this when he's asked somebody to try and tell me. So lately, he's been doing this. 
He's over here rubbing <laughs> excessively, and I, I'm, I'm having a hard time actually letting it go. It's, it's, it's a problem. <laughs> Watch First your words, off. Justin, a so, hard time. <laughs> well, the, the issue isn't that Chase is doing this. The issue is that he's leaving the other one alone. Steve, can you please help him out? Oh, yeah. Done. All Come right. On. First off, hold on. Hold my phone. This means hold that my phone. somebody's trying to... Hold my phone. I'm going to help you out on both occasions. Ready? And with this, I think we need to go. Oh my way. God! <laughs> <laughs> I get nervous, what? man. I get nervous. Bro! <laughs> I just touched that! Look, these shirts are thick. I don't know what to say. Oh no, that's horrible. <laughs> you guys, I'm so sorry this degraded into a chase show. <sighs> but oh, yeah, it's so bad. Just three coming in. That is so bad. Okay, <laughs> two minutes. No, it was three minutes, two minutes ago. Ugh. One more minute, last questions. Let's get it. Turnaround time on a new set of RC2s. Uh, actually, that's you, Steve. What do you got? Uh, we are wait <laughs> No, we're waiting for this. So I'm waiting on Fox right now. We don't have RC2s I don't have, in I don't have them in stock. So as soon as they come in, it's usually a four to six week turnaround. I try and get them out within a couple weeks. Okay, Matt, you got to have Yep, I had this question twice. High clearance arms, are they still in the works? Uh, yes, actually, they're, they're almost done. Those are like my socks. They're almost done. They're, yeah, they're <laughs> almost done, just like your socks. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Chase, you got anything you want to say? That's it. Mike Tubbs, you know, I'd be licking my shirt, but you still owe us beer and tacos from last time for you to be making any more That's wagers, right, my friend. Mike, mm. you have no room to talk until you pay up, sucker. That's it. <laughs> Josh, got anything you want to say? So good. <laughs> so good. I love it. You just, nope. Well, Justin, if we're going to end it right here, Bye. all I'm going to say is if you guys want to buy any of the stuff that we've talked about or anything we have to offer, please go to www.shocktherapist.com. Or if you have any questions, call into the shop at 623-217-4959. Mike Dove says it's coming. We'll see.